Christians have long held many sacred remnants from the time when Jesus walked the earth. Ancient Catholics stormed the world in search of anything that they could bring back to Europe, from holy relics mentioned in the Bible to bone fragments of a saint, so that they might have a physical memorial for reverence in their sanctuaries. Although there is a long history of falsifying artifacts for the sake of profit or prominence, one of the most hotly contested of these is the Shroud of Turin, also known as the Holy Shroud. This piece of linen, found in the 14th century, bears a negative image of a man that some believe to be Jesus Christ and claim that the cloth is his burial shroud. The cloth was denounced in 1389 as a fake, a claim that faced heated opposition, and the modern-day Catholic Church has neither denounced nor endorsed the shroud. It is currently housed in the Cathedral of Turin in Italy, where it has remained since 1578. So today, here at Unexplained Mysteries, we'll be taking a look at some of the mysteries that surround this revered shroud and the ongoing debate of its authenticity. New details emerge. The Shroud of Turin's authenticity has been hotly debated since its first appearance in 1390, while also holding firm the position as one of the most well-known relics of the Catholic Church. Finally, in 1988, a team of scientists were given permission to cut small samples of the cloth and sent it out to three different laboratories, all of whom independently dated the cloth to 1260 to 1390 AD. However, even these seemingly definitive results were contested, as critics claimed that the test swatches were from relatively more recent areas where the shroud had been patched, contaminated by a fire in the 16th century or delivered inaccurate results due to the number of people who have handled the cloth over the centuries. There is vast amounts of evidence for both sides. Firstly, the shroud depicts the full body image of a man lying with his hands crossed over himself as though for burial, with markings on his wrists. In the Middle Ages, Jesus Christ was also depicted with crucifixion marks over his palms, although in biblical days they would in fact have driven the stakes through the wrists. Additionally, experts remain mystified as to what could have created such an accurate negative image of a man on the cloth. Tests analysing the cloth have found no evidence of pigments, paints, dyes or stains on the fibre, while also confirming that at some point in its past the cloth had been in direct contact with the body. However, some experts believe that the Middle Ages date of the shroud points to its use as a burial shroud for a crucifixion victim of the day, centuries after Jesus was crucified. Adding to speculation, in 2018 a bloodstain pattern analysis was performed on the shroud and concluded that the faint blood flow stains came from different angles and were not produced by one body as it was being laid out for burial. Believers in the shroud have also pointed out that the Middle Ages radiocarbon date could have been based on years of the shroud being on public display for believers to touch, kiss and pray over after its reveal in the 14th century. As well as possible carbon monoxide contamination, both instances which could conceivably cause a 1st century artefact to be inaccurately dated as Middle Ages. Radiocarbon Dating of the Cloth In an attempt to put the matter of whether the Shroud of Turin was really a 1st century original or a Middle Ages reproduction to rest, the Catholic Church permitted the radiocarbon dating of the shroud in the 1980s, once technology had advanced far enough that removing a large piece of cloth was not necessary. To make the radiocarbon dating as valid and incontestable as possible, the Vatican allowed the process to be open and observable. Present at the removal of the sample was the Archbishop of Turin Cathedral, physicists, representatives from the three labs that would be dating the shroud, the textiles experts who could verify that the sample was taken from the original portions of the cloth, not a later repair. A small 10mm by 70mm sample was taken away from any damaged patches or charred areas and split into three portions, which was then sealed in aluminium foil inside stainless steel chambers to prevent contamination. The entire process was watched by multiple witnesses, as well as thoroughly documented through pictures and videos, 
in an attempt to validate the process through which the sample was taken and prevent the need for a future sample to be taken for testing, if at all possible. Two containers were also similarly packaged with a control cloth and given to laboratories, which were not told whether they had the real shroud or a control group. However, these controls were easily identifiable as not from the ancient shroud due to the unique weave of the cloth and the process of identifying their origins was not completed. Although the three laboratories agreed not to share their results among each other until the final conference and relabeled the samples so that technicians did not know where the cloth came from. All of this was in an attempt to eliminate any bias that a scientist or laboratory could have in skewing the results, as well as to validate whatever results were released. Once the final results were released, each laboratory presented roughly the same origin estimate, with not much of a difference to be considered significant. Conclusively, all three laboratories demonstrated a 95% confidence that the linen that was tested originated between 1260 to 1390 rounding up or down to the nearest 10 years. Therefore, the shroud was determined to date back to the Middle Ages, supporting the theory of a clever forgery. Unfortunately, despite the elaborate measures taken to validate whatever findings emerged, believers in the divine provenance of the shroud found a plethora of reasons to doubt the studies, citing contamination of the fibres and a host of other reasons. The debate raged on in forums and papers concerning the shroud, and many take the radiocarbon dating as a mere suggestion. Thus, what was intended to be a key step in determining the authenticity of the shroud once and for all ended up being a source just as hotly debated as the shroud itself. No paints or substances No matter which side of the authenticity argument you find yourself on, an enduring mystery of the shroud is the source of the image of a man. If it were painted on as part of the supposed forgery of the Middle Ages, chemists would be able to analyse and identify the chemical profiles of the pigments used, as well as even microscopic signs of brushstrokes, both of which are conspicuously lacking. In fact, there is no evidence of any form of paint, dye or any other substance being used to darken the fibres. It is as if the individual fibres simply changed colour of their own accord, presumably from chemical reactions as a result of laying upon the body as the burial shroud of Jesus Christ. Laying on a human form in this manner could result in the chemical darkening of the cellulose fibres of the cloth with the application of even very mild heat, although other burial shrouds don't usually bear negative images of the person they encapsulated. Additionally, there is the presence of bloodstains and badly decomposed DNA that points to the fact that this was likely used for some type of body. Another hypothesis for the source of the image stems from the fact that the image imprinted on the cloth is a negative, that is, the dark and bright parts of the image are reversed, which is a technique in photography. Some argue that if the cloth were indeed a medieval forgery, the image could have conceivably been imprinted on the cloth using primitive photography materials that would have been accessible such as silver nitrate and a quartz lens. Researchers have been able to create replications of the shroud using these simple techniques, although they haven't been successful in making the image remain on the cloth when the silver is removed. However, most theorists acknowledge that this is a stretch of the imagination, as there is no documentation of any sort of knowledge of this type, and the odds of no mention of such a groundbreaking technology being made in any surviving record is slim. The fact that the image is likely not man-made, but possibly rather the result of a chemical happenstance, refutes the theory that the Shroud of Turin was a clever forgery of the Middle Ages, and the radiocarbon dating rules out the authenticity of it being a first-century burial shroud. Theory moderates combine these two compelling pieces of evidence and suggest that perhaps the linen was the shroud of a crucified man in the Middle Ages, something that was not unheard of for the time. Whether or not the Shroud of Turin is even proven to be authentic or merely a forgery, it is nonetheless an incredibly powerful artifact that contributes greatly to the faith of millions of people all over the world. Even from the perspective of non-believers, the Shroud is a powerful archaeological piece dating back to the Middle Ages with a shockingly accurate depiction of a crucified man. Although how this image appeared on the cloth will likely remain a hotly debated mystery, the significance of the Shroud of Turin cannot be contested, no matter which side you fall on.
But what do you make of these mysteries around the Shroud of Turin? Be sure to let us know your thoughts in the comment section below and help us by growing this community while working to solve these unexplained mysteries. Thank you for watching and don't forget to subscribe for more videos.